Hello and welcome. I'm Joe V from 4x5 Photography. In this series of videos we're looking at uh, all the things you need to know to use your large format camera. Our first video focused on film uh, handling and loading and this video is going to focus on the camera, the different components, how you set them up, basically everything you need to know to use your large format camera to capture the image that you're looking for. So stay tuned and let's get right into it. Now one of the most important setup elements when you're working with large format film, or really with, with any photography, is composing the shot correctly. And uh, this camera affords you the chance or the opportunity to compose your image three different ways. Of course there's the upper viewfinder here where we can look through it and we can see uh, the image that we're about to capture. There's a uh, very simple rail system that's included with this camera a view and rail system where you look through and then this frames your image and probably the most important when you're talking about large format photography is the rear uh, ground glass and what happens is your lens once it's opened once the shutter is opened it will project an image onto your ground glass and this is really where you do your fine uh, focus adjustment and we'll show more of that a little uh, later in the video but this is probably, from a large format photographer's perspective, the most important component of the, of the camera because you're assured that the image is composed correctly in terms of what you want inside the image and out. This is the size of your 4x5 film, uh, your negative, and uh, it basically shows you exactly what's going to be captured on that negative when you expose the film. So those are three ways and what you'll find, uh, what I've found uh, using a camera like this is that I generally use the upper eye piece here for basic uh, composition and then uh, once I've got an idea of, what, of how I want to compose my image camera goes on to a tripod and then I'm working uh, basically uh, and only from uh, the back here and looking at the image on the ground glass. Now, once the camera's set up, we've composed our image, we're satisfied with the sharpness of it on the uh, ground glass in the back, it's time to capture our image. And so, really the last main component of this camera, or of a camera like this, uh, in fact what you'll find on the back of every 4x5 and large format camera, is a film uh, holder back, or what's called a camera back. And this camera back allows one, uh, for you to focus as we discussed on the uh, ground glass, but then two, for you to be able to extend it so that you can put in your film holder, which then sits, uh, or I should say is positioned such that the negative is exactly in the same plane as the ground glass was before you put the film back in. So by focusing sharply on the ground glass and then having this film back expand out, uh, and inserting the, uh, the negative in its place, you're then ready to capture your image. Now this particular back for this camera is something called a graph lock back. And as an example, uh, just to show you some of the differences, the graph lock back different, differentiates this camera because I can take off this ground glass back and I can substitute other components here roll film holders and other components that I want to use. In comparison, this is a little older camera. Again, it's still a Graflex. This one happens to be a Speed Graphics. Uh, and I'll talk about the differences of these cameras in a separate video. But it has what's called a spring back. Still has the exact same function that you see with the other back. The ability to insert a film holder that's positioned exactly where the ground glass is. But this film this back, camera back, can't be removed. So a spring back is actually a little bit more limited, but unless you have uh, components to substitute for this, uh, the price for a Graflex, uh, or I should say Graflock back on your Graflex camera is uh, probably something that you want to consider. Both are functional, but you are going to no notice differences in different types of cameras. For large format, the Graflock 4x5 camera back 
is pretty much the standard. So even cameras that weren't made uh, by Graflex, uh, you're going to find a Graflock back that allows you to substitute components in, including things like uh, alternate uh, ground glass backs or Fresno lenses or as I said roll film. So those are two differences. And then lastly what you'll find regardless of the type of back what also comes with your camera is a ground glass hood. So when you're out in the sun that's one of the things that helps you to be able to uh, focus your image. I don't generally use this in the field and you'll see that more a little later in the video because it is restrictive um, you can't get down and really look closely at the ground glass, but uh, that is a component that would come with a camera like this. There's a couple more examples of some of the components you can find on these old cameras. Uh, this camera, like we talked about, had three mechanisms for composing the image. This camera over here also has those three, but it has a fourth here, and what this is is called a range finder. So, uh, it captures an image through two different lenses and then as you focus uh, and you're looking through the range finder, uh, those two images when they converge and become one, you know your camera is in focus. So that was generally how when these were used by the press back in the, well, really since the 20s and 30s when this camera originally came out. That was the fast way for focusing, so they wouldn't fiddle around with trying to focus on the ground glass. They would use the rangefinder. Uh, I primarily, of these two cameras, uh, I use the one over here on the right, the Crown Graphic, for a couple reasons. Uh, but quite frankly, uh, I don't really find much use for the rangefinder because when I go out into the field, uh, as I said before, I'm working primarily from the ground glass to focus. So uh, I'm. I'm not interested in one, the weight that you get with the rangefinder, uh, or two, some of the uh, very um, complex and sometimes you know finicky adjustments you have to make to keep these intact. So if you're considering a, you know, the, an inexpensive large format camera, the fewer components that it has, that it has, you're going to find the, the lower the cost. So uh, you can certainly get away without uh, even this top image finder being on there, image image eyepiece. Secondly, uh, one thing I didn't cover is how you open these cameras, and to some folks it uh, it is a mystery. What you will find is no switch, but there's a little bump either on the side or on the top of the camera here, and you can see it in the video. This one's on the side, so by pressing that, the camera will open. This one happens to be on the top, and it will do the same. And so that's the mechanism for opening the camera. One additional element that I didn't show is the shutter release here. So you'll see on this camera, let's bring the bellows out. Okay, the shutter release will depress this arm here, which is what triggers the uh, shutter to fire. And then, uh, really, uh, that, that's the main components of this. You'll find on some of these cameras, you'll, you'll see that there are small locking mechanisms here or stops on the rails, the focusing rails that stop the standard from coming all the way out. Those are set for the focal lengths that you're using. So in, in this example, in this camera, I've got a 127 millimeter uh, lens on here and this stop is set so that I know when I pull this out and it hits that stop that I'm close to where I need to be to focus and then I'm focusing using my focusing knobs uh, which move the rail, moves the rail in and out here. So depending on the focal length that tells you how far you initially set your bellows in terms of extension and then you're fine adjusting with the focus here. So those are the components, the main components of the Graflex speed graphic and then the crown graphic. Now we've talked about the major components of this camera. Lens, shutter, lens board, front standard, bellows, uh, we didn't talk much but obviously this is the camera body, the various mechanisms for composing your shot, uh, the uh, rear setup here with the camera back for uh, that allows extension for uh, insertion of the film back and then of course the ground glass. 
And so one of the uh, more important elements now to talk about in detail is the camera lens and shutter. And uh, I'm going to remove this camera lens so that we can talk a little bit more about it. Okay, so this is uh, an, a good example of what you'll see in terms of lenses for large format photography. Uh, depending on your camera, your lens board will vary in size. This is a 4x4 lens board. All Graflex cameras uh, take a 4x4 lens board. And what you'll also find out, too, is that the hole for the lens, depending on the focal length of the lens, will change also. So when you change lenses, if you have multiple lenses, and, and again, this isn't any different from what you're doing today with uh, you know, current digital technology, you buy and you substitute lenses. Now, uh, today, most people buy uh, zoom lenses because of their flexibility. Uh, this is not a zoom lens. This is a, a prime lens, if you want to think of that, about it. That was fixed focal length, and uh, really, you vary the, uh, the focal length by changing lenses here. So think of it in terms of uh, today's world as a prime lens. And a lens has two elements, what you see in front here and what you see in the back, and both of these can be removed. They unscrew from the shutter. Uh, what you'll also find here, and we'll talk about the shutter in a minute, but what you'll also find here uh, are components like this that are used to support the flash. The, the Graflex camera that we're using in this demonstration is what's called a press camera, so uh, you may uh, have seen old pictures of um, photographers and press people holding the camera up with the, uh, the big um, bulb for flash. Uh, this, is, this helps to delay the flash, so not something we're using uh, when we take this camera out into the field and, and not something to worry about if it's not there. But like all lenses, you've got uh, a shutter, that has variable shutter speeds and depending on the age of the lens uh, you'll either have more options or fewer uh, you've got both uh, T and B, bulb and timed uh, bulb will give you the ability with this lens like it will on any current lens to be able to um, you know, determine the length of, of your exposure uh, by manipulating the shutter and then T will just hold the shutter open until you click the shutter again and then down here you've got aperture so you can adjust the aperture of your lens what you'll find on many um, large format lenses is an aperture that goes quite high since uh, these were used out in the field uh, it's, it's not it's not uncommon to see these extend up to you know you know have stops in the 30s and 40s so uh, that helps you get a, a obviously a clear de a very deep depth of field what this lens also has is what's called a focus or a composition button. And let me just show you how the shutter works here. So I, I, I'm locking, cocking my shutter here. And then depending on my shutter speed, it's mechanical. So it's, it's lasting for it's keeping the shutter open as long as I would like it to. But to be able to focus an image with a large format camera, I have to, be, I have, to have light coming through this and hitting the ground glass while I'm focusing. Now I could do two things depending on the uh, lens that I've got. I could put this on T and I could cock my shutter, fire it, and the lens will stay open. Let's see if we can show that. Okay, so the lens will stay open. Or in the case of this lens, since I've got a focal lock or a composition lock, I can cock my shutter, hold this down, fire it and the lens will stay open. And so those are really the, the main components of this lens. Uh, it's not necessary to have a composition or a focal lock if you've got T because you have to have a way of, for light to get through there. But it is handy because then you don't have to uh, adjust the shutter speed each time you want to um, feel like uh, you, you need to refocus or to recompose the image. So if you watch video one, you learned how to handle and load film. Video two here, we looked at all of the components of our large format camera 
and how they work together, uh, what the main elements are, and particularly in detail how our lens works. So the next video is going to cover using this camera to actually capture an uh, image out in the field. So I hope you'll take the chance to watch it.